वेलकम बैक टू एजिकार्डियो वाइज इन पार्ट वन वी अनकवर्ड हाउ फैटी लिवर कैन बी योर फर्स्ट क्लू टू साइलेंट हार्ट डिसीज एस्पेशली इन इंडियंस नाउ इन पार्ट टू लेट्स गो डीपर वी विल डिस्कस हाउ डू यू कैच इट अर्ली वॉट टेस्ट एक्चुअली मैटर एंड कैन यू रिवर्स द डैमेज लेट्स आंसर इट ऑल स्टेप बाय स्टेप फैटी लिवर गिवज नो वॉर्निंग साइंस मे बी सम डल एग्स फटी दैट्स इट बट बिनीथ द सर्फेस योर मेटेबोलिक इंजिन इज ओवरवर्कड inefficient and turning toxic fatty liver usually shows up silently so our first step is imaging now the first test that most people get is an ultrasound yes it can detect fatty infiltration but it's operator dependent it cannot measure how much inflammation or scarring is present and it often misses early fibrosis so uh, for more clarity i recommend something better and that is a fibro scan A fibro scan is a non-invasive 10-minute test. It's it's also called a transient elastography. A fibro scan gives us two key values. First is CAP, that is controlled attenuation parameter. Uh, its value of more than 260 dB per uh, meter means significant steatosis or fat content. Now second is LSM or liver stiffness measurement. Now values of more than 8 kPa are suggestive of fibrosis. Now studies show that fibro scan has a more than 85% sensitivity and specificity for detecting significant liver fibrosis. So while an ultrasound tells that your liver is fatty, a fibro scan tells you how much damage has already begun. The second step is blood test. I often get asked, uh, "Doctor, my SGPT is normal, so I'm safe, right?" Not necessarily. Over 40 to 50% of patients with NAFLD have normal liver enzymes. so we go deeper the recommended blood test uh, include a complete liver function test uh, which includes your sgot sgpt your ggt next comes fasting lipid profile with focus on your triglycerides hdl non hdl ldl and most important triglyceride to hdl ratio now apob which indicates number of atherogenic particles should also be added next is your hba1c and fasting insulin uh, that's for metabolic dysfunction and hscrp which may signal metabolic inflammation the third and final step is heart evaluation now we may need to find if the damage has been done and is spreading now fatty liver increases your risk of heart attack even if your cholesterol is normal and studies show that 20 to 30% of asymptomatic indians with fatty liver and borderline lipids had positive coronary calcium scores so apart from the common non invasive tests like uh, your ecg an echo and a treadmill test or a stress test if the patient is over 40 has diabetes or a strong family history and nafld on imaging i strongly recommend uh, using a ct coronary calcium score now this is a powerful non invasive test that shows if plaque is building up inside your coronary arteries calcium scoring improves shared decision making especially for statins lifestyle and aspirin in primary prevention now the good news in the early stages fatty liver is one of the few lifestyle related diseases we can completely reverse no complicated procedures no lifelong pills at least in most cases just daily deliberate change a 7 to 10% weight loss can lead to 30% reduction in liver fat improvement in liver enzymes lower triglycerides better insulin sensitivity and reversal of early fibrosis now even 5% weight loss shows measurable metabolic improvement now here's the five part prescription that i give most patients with nafld borderline cholesterol or early fibrosis first is fix the plate eat smart not less now, we are not starving the liver here we are feeding it right so cut sugar jaggery excess rice bakery items minimize fructose that you find in cola sweet and juices honey include high fiber substances dals low oil rotis add proteins to each meal your dal eggs tofu and curd go for low glycemic meals and keep insulin spikes down second is move more especially the muscles see nafld is a disease of the sedentary insulin resistant body and nothing fixes that like movement you need 30 to 45 minutes uh, brisk walking cycling or swimming 5 days a week add strength or resistance training 2 to 3 times a week now you can even start at home just maintain form and avoid injury and finally include neat that is uh, non exercise activity thermogenesis so walk during calls 
take stairs and reduce your sitting time. Now data shows that exercise improves liver fat and triglycerides even without weight loss. Next is sleep right, stress less. Aim for 70 to 8 hours per night because poor sleep worsens insulin resistance. Try sleep tracking for 7 days, meditation, journaling or 10 minutes of quiet to calm your cortisol levels. See cortisol when chronically high worsens fat deposition in the liver. Next comes medications if your profile needs them. Now I always tell my patients no pill replaces lifestyle. No doctor can do what daily discipline can. But when lifestyle isn't enough or there is advanced disease we have to consider medications. Rather, we prescribe them strategically. So the drug that is uh, commonly prescribed is saroglitazar, uh, marketed as Bilipsa. Now saroglitazar is a dual PPAR alpha gamma agonist. It reduces triglycerides, improves insulin resistance and may improve your liver enzymes and the NASH histology. That's documented well in Indian trials. Now we initiate them. If your triglycerides are more than 200, there is early fibrosis and diabetes with NAFLD. But is Bilipsa a replacement for statins? No, statins are still the gold standard for reducing LDL and cardiovascular risk. So Bilipsa can be added, not substituted, especially if both liver and lipid issues coexist. So we use statins for high risk patients with LDL that is persistently more than 100 or coronary calcium score that is more than zero. In fact, statins are safe in NAFLD and reduce cardiovascular risk. Next is metformin or the SGLT2 inhibitors or the new GLP-1 analogues which we use in diabetics with fatty liver. Now vitamin E at 800 international units is often used in non-diabetics with NAFLD for a short term. Some patients ask me, uh, doc can I use Ayurvedic medications like LU52? Now there is limited evidence, some herbal formulations may help LFTs mildly but they won't reverse NASH or reduce cardiac risk. And finally track progress. Don't wait for symptoms. Repeat your LFTs and lipid profile every uh, three to six months. You may need to do a fibro scan annually. Recalculate your triglyceride to HDL ratios, your APO B and non HDL values if initially abnormal, and reassess heart health with cardiac testing at intervals. What gets measured improves. That's not just business wisdom, it's medical truth. Bottom line, you don't need to wait for a drug. You don't need to wait for a heart scare as well. You just need to start one plate, one walk, one choice at a time. So if your report says fatty liver, don't brush it off as a routine thing. It's your liver's way of waving a red flag. You might feel fine today, but inside your metabolism is on fire, quietly damaging your blood vessels. Treat fatty liver like a cardiac risk factor because it is. And to every viewer watching this, your Health is your daily habit, not your doctor's prescription. Make small changes today because your liver and your heart, they're quietly depending on you. So this brings us to the end of our HG Cardio Wise cholesterol series. We have decoded good and bad cholesterol, how heart disease starts, what diet, exercise and supplements can do, medications, when and why, and now the fatty liver link that ties it all together. So let me know in the comments what you uh, did learn and what you would want to see next as we start our series on hypertension. Like, share and subscribe because someone you know might be just one report away from a silent heart risk. Until next time, stay heart wise, stay edgy cardio wise. Goodbye.